Okay, I think critically for us this morning is to hear from the experts based on the presentations they made earlier on, really to understand their pers uh, perspective on what they envision the future of health education to be in the coming years. So we may start off at the far end, uh, sure. Francisco. You want to go first? Yeah, of course. Thanks. Uh, well, health. I have a lot to say about language education. Health education. Here, here, I'll, 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 I'll take the whole panel. Uh, well, uh, I want to say there are a couple of things that are probably more important. One is increase participation rate in higher education. I think the countries need to allow that and regulate in favor of that, and 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 really set up. Uh, a level play field for the private sector to have a, a, a share as we have demonstrated in other countries. And, and, and when you're training, like we do, for example, uh, 12,000 nurses at the associate degree technical level in Chile, it's one example that you can do it with quality and, by the way, ensuring employment for life for those people. It's very, very rewarding. So I guess uh, countries to facilitate a increased uh, participation rates in higher education will be important and uh, and this uh, in, in a level in a, in a uh, level play field really and the second part will really be about uh, you know really uh, working towards uh, sometimes shortening the the time it takes to get degrees in healthcare because of the tremendous need and the critical shortages uh, really think through and and really confronting some of the establishments in terms of how really how much time you really need to 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 train a, a nurse or a doctor or a dentist for the tremendous need. You have attrition and by the time that they graduate you have 30, 40 percent of who enter. So you really need to look through the, the time it takes to form a health professional, most likely reducing the time. There are good examples of that. And, and with that I think you're going to contribute a lot. And, and finally I would say obviously distance online education has a huge, huge role in the future of, of higher education in, in its different forms. Okay, thank you for that. I yeah. think, uh, yeah. now I will <laughs> reward myself just looking at the future of education, especially coming well, I, from the university I, No, I mean, I, I can reframe it in terms of you were speaking of training nurses and doctors. I think one of the trends um, that people are talking about in online education, of course, is that um, it's the rise of, of lifelong learning, it's the rise of informal learning. So we're trying to get away, I think, from thinking about, I, I heard a quote um, from Andrew Ng, who is one of the co-founders of Coursera, um, and he was giving a talk, and he said, you know, the, the old model used to be four years of college and 40 years of a career. And so you, the idea being you learn what you need to learn in college, and then you go out in the marketplace and you're fixed, you're okay. That's an old model that nobody believes in anymore, and so now we're thinking much more about um, transitioning to this idea of teaching people how to learn and then projecting them, sending them off into the fields to continue their learning. So I think that's important. And of course, the, the bridge is online learning, I would say, because people have now have access to all these wonderful OER. Oh, yes, yeah. So I think uh, that, that's critical, especially for continuous professional development, right. and will allow them to at least get some some recognition either for, towards licensure. Right. I think those are critical things that we have to look at for motivation of health workers and anybody in general there and other players within who are striving to be educated. So Christopher, so what do you have to tell us about the future of education from your hmm. perspective? I'm still trying to figure out the present of education. <laughs> um, the varying degrees of success. Uh, I think that to just to go back to the original idea of um, how we use the technology around education is going to influence how it evolves. Mm -hmm. And so it's not so much about making a prediction and seeing where we land as deciding how we're going to use this technology and guide it through that development process. Uh, I, I really love the point about you know, looking at lifelong learning as a, as a goal. And on, uh, online education playing an important role in moving beyond K through 12 and just college education and the idea of having that, uh, that lifelong uh, approach. And what I hope won't happen is that this leads to a lowest common denominator uh, type of uh, uh, learning where we record a lecture and we put it online and we call it a class. Uh, what I'm hoping is that this will actually lead to uh, segmentation. We'll have uh, professional development being done in small groups or uh, facilitated formats as it makes sense. Um, and it'll be done appropriately for each audience. And then um, I guess the last thing I'd, I'd want to say on that is uh, right now we're looking mainly at a distribution model around online education. How do we blast content out there? How do we convene 10,000 person classes? 
Uh, but something interesting is happening as we shift from a, a distribution model to an information aggregation and then a content production model. And I, I, I use the comparison of uh, Netflix. Uh, you know, with Netflix, they start off you know, sending videos out there and then they collect information on who's watching what and what combinations. What do people want to see? And then they start producing content for those market audiences uh, appropriately so that they can optimize for that with their, uh, their distribution. I'm excited to see what that education looks like when teachers have access to students uh, with the level of detail uh, that's currently available and will be in the future. Okay, thank you. So I think uh, with those few remarks from our presenters, I think we, we, ha we do see the opportunities that applying technology uh, can't harness within either sector, education, health, or otherwise, uh, to really move uh, people forward towards being better persons and to encourage continuous learning. And I think that is a, a critical for us in this modern world to have always continuous learning. I want to say thank you for, to the panelists for their inputs, their great presentations. Uh, we hope uh, the audience will be able to interact further with them, uh, ask questions and get to know what each one of them could benefit you with as uh, within your various uh, institutions or organizations, NGO, there's a lot that we can apply towards, for, towards the future of education. Thank you very much.